What's going on everybody? Chris Esplin back with more Firebase. Today we're going to cover querying data. There are just a few simple ways to query data with Firebase. It's actually quite limited. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now, cover it all, and then you'll know everything you need to know to query. All right, let's go. Okay, first, what have I got? I've got a list of users. Here you go, you can see on the right hand side in my viewer, I've just added these using push keys. And they're Luke Skywalker, C3PO, R2D2, R2D2. And I've got their height, which is a string, got their name, which is a string, and order, which is a number, and of course the push key. You can see I've got 10. Obi-Wan at the bottom. All right. Now we've got a bunch of different ways to query this, and I'm going to show you here in index.js. I've just npm installed Firebase, so I can require Firebase, and I initialize my app. I have a service account here that I've already got. We've covered this in earlier videos. If it's confusing, go back and watch my earlier videos, and I will link to those in the comments. And of course, we've got the database URL. Next, we set up the reference. In this case, the reference is going to go to my root node, then the ref is going to dig a little bit down to query data, and then we're going to get a users ref, which is going to be users. Now, when we run this, we're going to first it's going to read out the string for the users ref, so we can see the entire string, the entire path. Next, we're going to say order by child order. So in this case, the child we're going to order by is the order child, and at three. Now, three is a number. Three is the order. It references this order here for R2D2. And we're going to listen to the child added event. Every time the child added event fires, we're going to get a new snapshot. I'm just going to log out snap.val. Now, child added, of course, we've covered this before. Child added fires once for every existing record in the list when you first line it up. So, see here, okay, it reads out the list, query data users, then it reads out, hey, height. For Luke Skywalker, height's 172, C3PO's 167, and we've got the orders one, two, and three. You'll notice, of course, because we ended at three, we've got one, two, three, right there. All right, order by, child, that's how it's done. All you also notice is a Firebase warning at the bottom. Using an unspecified index, consider adding index on order at query data users to your security rules for better performance. So let's do that. I'm going to go over here to my rules, rules, query data, users index on. Look, I've got an empty string that I just set up. All right, now we've got query data index on order. Come over here, run it again, and check it out. That error is gone. Great, so what can we do with this? We can do a bunch of fun little things. We can say end at three, we can say end at say five, and you can watch it do its thing again. There, so it read out all the way down to layer organa. Now we can also order by key. So instead of order by child order, we can pass in order by key. And it's gonna order by the push keys. But five is not a push key. We, we need to pass in, if we want a push key, we need to go over here, yeah, it's gonna throw an error on us. Go over here and say, hey, end at, let's grab a push key. So we pass in layer organa got to be a string, and you'll notice it ends at the push key, lower layer organa. Now what else can we do? We can also say dot limit to last three. What happens if we do that? Let's check it out. Now we get three, four, and five ending at layer organa. So we're still, we're still respecting the range, which ends at layer organa, but now we're limiting to the last three. So I could say limit to first three now, and we'll get one, two, and three. Again, we've limited the range from the beginning down to this key for layer organa, and because we're getting limit, limiting to the first three, we get Luke, C3PO, and R2D2. This is effectively bookending our, our query. All right, so now let's say, let's start out instead. Because, you know, book, book ending is kind of a strange thing. I, I don't see any reason to actually use that in practice. So let's see start at here. Order by key start at. So now we're going to start with Leia Organa, limit to first three. Now we get five, six, and seven. We get Leia, Owen, and Beru, Whites, and Lars. 
great, great. This is all pretty straightforward. We've got limit to first, limit to last, start at, end at. We can even do an equal to. And look at that, we're gonna get layer organa. Doesn't really matter if we have a limit to first because there's only one key that's equal to, to this, uh, this string. If you're using you know, order by a child, you may actually be ordering, say, by a child that's shared by multiple different records, therefore you're equal to, you may actually be able to limit to first, limit to last. Uh, it's a little strange though, because how do you sort, or how do you sort to do limit to first on a child that is identical across the board? Really strange, it'll just return three random, I mean, maybe it's random, maybe it orders by the key as well, but you can't, you can't mix and match equal to and limit, limit, limit to first, limit to last. So if you're gonna use an e, a start at, end at, or equal to, uh, it's gotta be, in this case, where you're ordering by key, it's gotta be a key that you pass in. So when you limit to last, you're limiting to the first or last key as well. Uh, once, you, once you specify an order by, and you gotta specify an order by, or well, I guess, I guess you don't, you can default to key. So watch here, I got rid of the order by, it should default to key. Is it gonna default? No, it's not gonna default. So we, we get rid of it and we get our data. All right, so we need to have the order by so it knows what we're passing into the equal to call and then of course to, what to limit on. All right, so child added, uh, well, it respects the equal to and the order by. Um, value event doesn't necessarily respect that. So you can, you can pass in value here and instead of equal to, let's try start at, limit to first three, and value will just fire once and it'll fire with an entire JSON object. And JSON objects are not ordered by their keys. Now in this case, they just happens to order, it happens to look right, but you can't rely on that ever, ever, ever. Okay, so you really wanna stick with the child added event. Now we've looked at mixing start at and end at and equal to with limit to first and limit to last. And it it's all pretty straightforward. It does sort of what you'd expect it to. There are a couple ways you can use it which don't make much sense, such as doing a limit to first with an end at or a limit to last with a start at, which will end up just sort of bookending your query because the end at and the start at, they define, define a range, but it's from the beginning to an end or from a start to the very end of the of the record set. And so if you do a if you if you limit at a start to the end of the record set, then you read out the last three. Well the limit's not really being hit. It doesn't necessarily do very much under most circumstances. Not super useful. So there are lots of non-useful ways you can use this that just are atypical. And maybe you'd use them on sort of an edge case in your query, but uncommon. What I'd like to cover now is what's really, really common, which is just listening to the end of a stream of data. The most common way to listen to your data is to say order by key, we don't need an end at for this, and we're gonna limit to last. We're gonna have to limit to last one. All right, so limit to last one, we've got Obi one Kenobi. Now I'm gonna collapse this so we can add some data here. We're gonna add a user, I'm gonna say anything we like, and let's add a key. I'm gonna shrink this a little bit so I can actually see it. I'm gonna say order 100, add, there we go. Now we got order 100, you see that dropped in there. And now I can go in here and I think I can change it and say name Chris. There we go. Oh, there was no added event. No change, we're not listening to the changed event, so we're gonna, if we're gonna wanna see it, we gotta run it again. All right. So now you see, we just get the very last record. This is the most common way to do this, because you wanna say, listen to one record, or maybe the last 10 records, or the last tier, let's say last three. Let's listen to the last three records, and then, so let's say we've paged three records out, then as we add records to it, we can, let's try that again, new record, add name spike, you add that and then it fires there. Child added 
is a great event. It listens to the end. Of, you can use it typically to listen to an end of a list and to just watch for the new children as they're added on. And because in Firebase you're typically dealing with data streams, this is typically the best way to manage your data. You listen to a child out of the event to say the last 10, last 10 records. And it's kind of like a paging system. So you listen to your last 10 records and as things get added, your data set changes. Um, as, so let's say you add a new record, your last 10, one record then drops off the end of that last 10 data set. So you'll get a child removed event for that one, and you'll get a child added event for the new record. And then you can change, if you want to page up, you can say, hey, here's my last, my 10th record. I'm going to do the same, start, listen to the last 10, but I'm going to do an end at now at the key for that, that, uh, that 10th record up. And then you get your next 10. And so you can just sort of walk your way up the data set using, you know, using end ats with the keys. So typically the way you use these queries is a limit to last with an end at or a limit to first because you want to start at the top and then you want to walk your way from the top to the bottom. But again, that's sort of like going back in time and walking toward the present. Typically with Firebase, we're using these push keys, which are time sorted. And we're going to be starting at the bottom of a list and walking back in time. That's the more common way to do this. So I've got written material. You can see below this video all the good stuff that I've, I'll have i link out to so you can actually read what I've just shown you with the, the code. And of course, as always, please subscribe. I hope you find these videos really useful. Ask me questions. I love to answer, get a dialogue going. Figure out what you need to learn to be productive in Firebase, and I'm happy to teach it. So thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.